And a good day to you all, my fellow musicians and recording enthusiasts. So, we are going to carry on again from where we left off last week by looking a bit further at getting the basics right when recording with audio. And many of the principles are identical no matter whether you are recording your voice or an instrument or even whether you're just plugging an instrument straight in via a cable. So, Today, we are going to address signal strength. I'm sure you've all seen the level meters on the gear you own. They can be found on many bits of equipment in both analog, where you have a medial that moves back and forth, as shown in this picture, and digital, where the needle is replaced by a series of colored lights, as shown here. Now, as with all subjects, we could go seriously down the rabbit hole and get very technical. But to begin with, we are going to keep it simple and brief. Essentially, what we are after is to supply a nice, strong signal without clipping, also known as peaking, because this can lead to distortion, or even worse, in the digital realm, a totally ruined sound. And this leads us on to what we call the signal to noise ratio. This is essentially the amount of good sound that we want compared to the amount of bad sound that we do not want. And no prizes for guessing that we want the difference to be as great as possible. You see, things such as cheap cables, long cable runs and lots of equipment such as guitar effects pedals all introduce noise onto your lovely sound. The way to minimise this is to make the signal louder, so it is proportionally much louder than the background noise. Now yes, you can remove all manner of noise with plugins and even outboard equipment, but that is not only time consuming and tedious, but it can detract from your original sound, and our aim should always be to enhance our sound rather than to make it inferior. The technical term for this is gain staging. Now, you can increase and decrease the volume or gain of your signal at a variety of positions in the signal chain. So let us look at this a little bit more closely. You may or may not be aware that different types of equipment produces signals of varying strengths. Instruments with pickups, such as guitars and other string instruments, produce a comparatively low signal level. Caveat time. Yes, guitars can have active pickups, which produce an increased signal strength, but in general, they produce a low output. Now, electronic instruments such as keyboards produce what we call a line level signal. This is a nice strong signal, and in general, it is nice and clean and requires no real boost. Microphones, on the other hand, can vary considerably. Ribbon mics produce a very low signal that will need a lot of boosting. Condenser mics require phantom power to work and as such produce a much stronger signal, with dynamic mics falling somewhere in the middle ground. Now for a quick point. This is a general rule and there will be variations, but we are starting out and keeping things simple. There are also devices, such as the cloud lifter, that can boost the mic signal strength. But again, we will look at these on a different day. So, what does all this mean in practicing? Well, what should you be looking for and aiming to achieve? Okay, so let us start with equipment that produces nice strong line level signals. As a rule, I will set the output volume at around three quarters, or 70 to 80%. However, all my equipment goes through a mixing desk before it is sent to the, my computer, and that has a variable input gain and also a fader that can be used to alter the signal strength. Your setup may well have different options. So, if you have no control over gain on your input, you will need to manage the gain on the instrument. You are looking for the lights on the input channel you are plugged into to be well into the green and wanting the loudest parts to occasionally light an orange light. If you are seeing red lights, reduce the signal strength, the volume control on your instrument. And if you are only lighting up a few green bars, well, increase it a bit. 
If you have a gain control on your input device, which can also be referred to as your sound card or analog to digital converter, then you would look to keep the instrument volume at around 70 to 80 percent and use the gain control on this input device to control the signal level. Caveat time yet again. Keyboards especially can produce a very wide variety of signal strength, especially when comparing a performance relying on single notes to one playing chords. So use your ears. If at any point you hear unwanted distortion or any other unwanted artifacts, start by turning down the instrument level to see if it cures the problem. If it does not, return the volume to the old level and try adjusting the next gain in the chain until it goes away. If it is still there, start looking at things like, is it battery powered and the battery is dying? Have you got a dodgy cable? Or even worse, is your equipment playing up? Try using different equipment, different cables, and different input channels to see if you can solve it. But I digress. Now, for electric guitars, it can be slightly different. The volume control on these can have a profound impact on the sound the guitar makes, and many guitarists will actively change the volume level for different tonal characteristics, even within the same song. And this is where the options can start to get a little bit bewildering. A guitar might be being recorded with mics on an amp or through a rack-based emulator, a box that mimics the sound of an amp, by directly plugging into your recording hardware and using software emulators to craft your sound, or as with acoustic guitars, with a microphone capturing the instrument sound directly for you. Now, I know I say this quite a bit, but we will be looking at all of this in later videos in much more depth. We are after all just starting out on our journey of exploration, but in general, the same rules still apply. So you should always be conscious of each stage of the signal chain so you can optimize the signal the whole way along. Then finally, we get to microphones and we enter a whole new world of options. I say that, but the underlying principles we have just been discussing stay the same. There will just probably be a few more areas to pay attention to. For instance, if you are using the condenser mic on a loud or very dynamic sound source, the opportunity for overload or peaking leading to distortion are greatly increased. So be aware of what the meters and your ears are telling you and err on the side of caution. Don't run the signal too hot as the perfect take may end up unusable. Things such as bass guitar, especially slap bass, and percussion items such as tambourine are classic examples. And equally, if you are using a mic like a ribbon, make sure you are getting a nice strong signal. If you are recording a guitar amp and you will not get complaints of noise, well, crank it up a little bit. Move some air, as I heard some great producer once say. Now, if you are constrained by the ambient noise you can make, look to make the environment quieter so you can boost the signal gain a bit more without also boosting environmental noise. You could also look to choose maybe a cardioid mic as we talked about in the last video, or maybe choose a different time of day to record, or even to create a type of enclosure around the mic and sound source to reduce the ambient interference. We will definitely be covering this on a future video, but a quick point, it should not be made of solid materials like wood or plasterboard as they will reflect the sound back at the mic, making the sound much worse. Well, it's that time again. I think you've heard enough of my voice on this subject. So now all I can say is to go away, practice all these principles and make some noise. Remember, the only bad question is the one you never ask. So scroll down, Fire away in the comments below, and whilst you're at it, hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe so maybe YouTube will share this video with others. Thank you for watching and have a great week making music. See you soon. Bye.